And welcome. Q Sports International and Predator present the 2023 Predator World 10 Ball Championships. PA, well, WPA sanctioned 128 players, $250,000 with the prize fund, $60,000 to the first place winner. Stage one is a race to eight, double elimination. Uh, winner breaks. Stage two is the final 32, goes to a race to 10. This is George Teche on the booth with Keith Paradise. George, we've been upgraded. Yes, we have. Yesterday uh, we worked on table two. Today we're on the main table. Yeah, I was on the second string yesterday. They've uh, promoted me for one match. And uh, you also, because that's where we were. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like Bob Euchre. We're in the front row. Well, we've got this German champion versus an American hopeful, Moscone hopeful, Shane Wolford versus Joshua Filler. Joshua winning the opening break or lag and being a race to eight. He'll make quick work. Yesterday's match on table uh, number two there where we had him uh, went uh, rather quick for Josh Filler. Every match on table two went very yesterday. quick yesterday. Was, that, was Josh's 8-1? I believe so, yes. So he wasn't tested. And that was over the Czech, Roman Heibler. And you'll see... Uh, Crowds in the stands, spectators are all from the pool leagues from BCA and USA pool leagues. The BCA is having the world championships here at the CSI Expo and uh, USA pool league is having their national championships. Josh making very quick work of this. Josh isn't one to, to ponder shots a lot. He plays very quickly, he always mm -hmm. has played. Mm -hmm very quickly. I think half the time he doesn't stop and think. If I can see it, I can make it and fire away. Uh, although he's much more experienced than that, much more seasoned than that. And uh, as you can see, his cue ball control is exceptional. The speed has been very, very good. And his break was excellent to begin with. Start things off the, if you look at the American hopeful there, Shane Wolford, 23 year old from Roanoke, Virginia. Josh Feller, no stranger to this event in the uh, initial 2019 World 10 Ball Championships. He was runner up to Koping Chung. One heck of a match. Just a, a couple little, yeah. just a couple little mistakes away. I want to say he beat him 13 to 11. Uh, so, yes, it was. And he's opened the first rack with the first win. Josh Feller with a break and run. John Lehman, our head referee. And this is how we know we've been upgraded. We are here with John. We are here with John. We are here with the, the whole big group. Yeah. Good so look at. I was going to say you were mentioning the the BCA Pool League uh, mm -hmm. people in attendance. Today, Wednesday, is the biggest day from an attendance standpoint for this event. Today is the opening day for the team event. You have the five person. BCA Pool League teams coming in and competing in their world championships. Mm -hmm. So we are. As you saw walking down here, we're jam-packed. Well, as they can see, as you people at home can see, looking down those corridors of the seven-foot tables in the background there, it's jam-packed with people, and we have to add five minutes to walk through that to get to the back to the pro arena. And uh, Josh is off and running with rack number two. One ball got taken out of the pocket, and it looks like Shane will have his first opening and no path to the one ball. I was gonna say, not much of an opening, no. really. So a push or, uh, it's gonna be a push or a push. I think I overheard John say push. And the break is where a lot of things change hands here in these matches. As the referees are racking and the, right, the break is unpredictable. We talked about that yesterday. Mm -hmm. I see some players who break from the side for fear of selling out if they don't pocket a ball. And you have players like the, the ones we commentated on yesterday, like Kachi and Max Lechner, who just park that cue ball towards the center of the table and go at it. And they're going for the runouts, as Josh just had. But he went from the side, didn't he? He did. Yes, the way the balls lay, usually when they're breaking from the side, the balls will end up on the same side as he broke from, as the player breaks from. 
you'll get six or seven balls on that side. Near scratch, it's gonna, it's gonna leak to the open, but nothing really offensive. Unless he chooses to bank this in the corner if it goes. At first glance, no it doesn't. Ten balls got him stuck, so he's playing safe all the way here. Oh, he parked it between two balls. His only escape or try to get safe here is to go up table and find his way three rails around, and it's wide open. Uh, uh, three rails around to the one ball, hopefully for this corner pocket you can see. And he's gonna try to jump out of this. See, I, I like the three railer. It's long, but if he can get by there and just jump the two, he's good, but that four ball looks awfully menacing. five-time Junior Expo champion, Music City Open champion. Jump the cue ball off the table. That's the exuberance of youth. Well, you're, that's, uh, well, look how high he had to get it quick and down even quicker. Yeah. Ambitious, aggressive jump shot. Josh has the option to try and three foul him but it looks to me like he's going to go ahead and open up the three with position on the two and go for the run out. This isn't exactly an easy table layout with that eight and that three bunched up. And then you have five balls bunched up in the center of the table that almost look like a drill. Yeah, Keith, watch how this opens up for him. He's going to go right between both balls. And now it's all open. And if he, he'll keep the cue ball down here on the bottom, probably play the four ball to the upper corner pocket or the side, and all of a sudden it becomes a, a standard run out. And the recognition with, and the speed with what he saw that was amazing. Immediately saw that. No, well, like I said uh, earlier on, he's a very fast oh. player. Always has been. Instincts, instincts run very strong with this young man. First time I saw Joshua play, I think was at the 2017, and at that time it was the U.S. Open down in Norfolk, and it was on a Friday, and he played Shane, and I didn't know anything about Joshua mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. He ran Shane over. I think he beat him like 11 to seven, and it, he plays so quickly and so confidently. It was four nothing before you even had the opportunity to really recognize what was going on. Yeah, he just went by this ball. He, I think he was attempting to hit it. I think so as well. The side, yeah. And uh, he's gone by it. Now he's searching for a hole. I'd love to see him bank it, just to see if it goes between the 7 and the 8 to the corner pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy shot, folks, but I, I, I kind of like to see this. Oh, it looks like he has room. It's awfully tight. And he does. And he has the angle to go from the 5 yep. over to the 6. And he's off the rail just enough to be able to do that. He's checking things out here. Players are on a 30 second time clock. And they get 60 seconds after the break to plan out their attack. And then they're on 30 seconds with one extension per player per rack. Josh is currently ranked 15th in the WPA, but he's only played seven events. Out of nine or ten, I think it is. So that was 2022 ranking. The only reason we didn't talk about, didn't talk much about the year that Joshua had last year mm -hmm. is because of the year that Francisco Sanchez Ruiz had, well, he had where he seemed to win everything in sight. He overshadowed everyone. Yeah. But you know, Joshua was top three or four on the money list through uh, for AZ Billiards. And I want to say he won the UK Open. Last year? Yes. Okay. Actually, we can pull those statistics up now <laughs> while John is about to do some racking. I can tell you he's the youngest player to ever win the China Open and 2018 Euro 10 ball championship at the same time. And takes, rack, takes down rack number two. In a little bit of a battle, starting out with a dry break. 
And again, Joshua second in 2019 to Coping Chung. Last year's winner, we were entitled to a very, very nice match between Bojack Shevchek and Christopher Tevis. What a what a match that was. That was a great match. And then the, year, the year prior was, was that Klinkachi and Naoyuki Oi. That was so the, we've uh, had some great ones. That was the, the uh, power delay yeah. tournament. Yeah. Longest uh, final in uh, World 10 Ball history, I think. <laughs> and one of the few that had a weather delay. We're having a little <laughs> bit of that today. We're running, our schedule's running a little bit crazy, but we're making do. Uh, the weather is having an effect inside this uh, conference center. And uh, another dry break by Josh? Another dry break, and it doesn't look like Balls really didn't. He hit this the one ball squarely. The balls didn't scatter particularly mm -hmm. well. Which, this is hand racking by a referee, and you're not allowed to check the rack. So, in those situations, those things will occasionally oh, happen. Oh, big miss by Shane Wolford. Not, not uh, a good start here. John just cut this right down the rail and just run away with it. I don't think he'll look twice. Or is he looking for a safety with the cue ball? Coming off the off the one behind the three is what he seemed to have point at. I like him going for this. Especially as well as he cuts the ball down table, down the rail. He's going safety all the way. And right up against the three ball. That is a safety. <laughs> and a well deserved round of applause. As he ponders that one. Yeah, he's going to have a lot to ponder. That big, that miss on that one ball was big for him. Uh, it would have afforded him a nice time at the table. And he's and fouled. Foul. Well, he's had one open shot and um, one forced, forced error. And as we saw in our match yesterday between, I want to say it was... Joven Bustamante mm -hmm. and Kachi. Yes. One or two unforced errors can be the difference between 3-3, three, 4-3, three, three, and 7-1, and a 6-2 in a real hurry. Yep. It sure was. And actually, uh, I think it was Roland Garcia that made three or four that really hurt him, and he yeah. ended up losing by a very big That's score of eight to two. It was That's it, who it, it was. was uh, Roland, yeah. It wasn't Jovan, it uh, was him. Yeah. Costly, costly misses. Well, it converts to two games. You know, you, your opponent gets one on the scoreboard and you don't, so that's two games. Is he gonna tuck behind? He tucked perfect. He just yeah. opened this rack up and says, it's mine. Which he needed to do because, again, those balls are clustered there. Mm -hmm. He just wants a slight angle to go from the four to the five, and he's got it. Look at this. He's, he's laying just perfect. Let's see how he maneuvers around that nine ball for this six. If he goes under it or over it. Gonna go under it. Guess he's gonna have to go short rail. Very I, short rail. I, I just wondered, <laughs> I, and that's why I wondered. See, I would have, I would have chosen a little bit more angle to come across and go ahead and go, go above it because you need the angle. To, oh, he's gonna be in uh, trouble here. No, he's not. No, he's good. Uh, I thought that was gonna come up a little higher. I just want to see him get out of trouble. That's just enough to get home. And there you can see Predators is the apex. Nine foot table, racked by the arrow rack. The Predator Arcadius, a reserve cloth. The arena lights. Gosh, even the bridge is Predator.
They are certainly a full service company. Well, they now. sponsor this young man at the table, and he's playing with their cue. I believe it's their glove. Nothing but net. He makes it look so simple. And Shane Wolford provided him uh, this game. He had an opening on the one and did not, wasn't able to capitalize. Josh takes game number three. John handing Joshua back the cue ball, nice and clean. Rack number four underway. Two ball, nine ball. And I think that five ball is guarding that a one. Sliver Just of the, enough. A sliver of the one to come down two rails and play safe at the bottom of the table. Oh, he can see more than I thought. I thought he just had a sliver of it. Looks like there's a full ball. Might move, might put the one ball down by the 10, keep the cue ball up on top. Nope, he came around. Nicely done safety there by Joshua. Looks he's got just a little bit of room to go three rails behind the one to make a hit. It's tight. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's tight. That five ball is a big, big ball there. Yeah. See, it, he, he had to get, make sure he, he got used the, the path five. that you yeah. used. Uh, he had to make sure to get around the five. He had to come real close to the five there to catch that rail shorter than what he did. And he hit the six instead of the one. Yeah, shots like that can usually be played towards the side pocket uh, with um, some degree of accuracy. And so a safety, and he gets ball in hand, goes back to work on rack number four. I know that, you. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry go, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to uh, fill in a little bit. So you had something to say. No, we were talking about Joshua's year oh, last okay. year. Yes. And I had pulled up his stats. Um, he finished second in the nine ball division at Derby City last year, lost okay. to Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in the finals. He won the Derby City Bigfoot Challenge last year. It's a five by 10 table. Correct. He. Um, did win the UK Open last year. As you said. Won the World Pool Masters last year. Was uh, fifth at the World Pool Championships last year. Ninth at the World Cup of Pool. Fifth at the European Open. Top 10 at the US Open nine ball. He finished uh, in ninth place. Top five at the International Open. And uh, top 10 finish at the uh, World Eight Ball Championships in Puerto Rico. So total amount in terms of prize earnings 
according to azbilliards.com, one hundred ninety thousand six hundred thirteen dollars. Thank you, Mike Howerton, for that information. Thank you, Mike. I bought him dinner on, on Monday, so so he already got his thank you from me. That is a uh, that's an invaluable resource that they provide. Mike Howerton is the president of our uh, Arizona Billiard Hall of Fame. Is he? Yes, he is. You know, I'm take this minute while he's got this three simple balls here to run out the rack. And I, I want to congratulate a local girl from Tucson who just placed second in the ladies, uh, I think it was silver singles, eight ball in mm -hmm. the BCA. Uh, Tracy Price, big shout out to you, young lady. Congratulations. All good for her. Congratulations, Tracy. Meanwhile, Josh still working on the eight ball. Making it look easy for game number four in a race to eight. He's putting the hurt on uh, Shane Wolford. And coming into this match, you knew Shane Wolford was going to have to play pretty much perfect to have a chance against Joshua. Oh, okay. maybe, maybe have Joshua make a couple mistakes. Oh. But when Joshua's doing stuff like this, pinning the cue ball on safeties, and we all we know he can get out from anywhere. Well, the ask gets even more difficult. Very, 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 very correct there, Keith. Uh, especially with the year he had last year, and we, as we use Fargo rate as an indicator, uh, Josh has the highest Fargo rating in the world at 8.39. Uh, Shane is at 7.54. So that alone tells you there was a big ask of Shane. Not that he couldn't do it, not that you know, but just that it was a big ask to uh, put this young man in his chair. I mean, we have seen upsets in this tournament already. We've certainly seen a lot of near upsets in this tournament already as uh, well. How did we like the one we saw last night, or was it last night or the night before with Alex Pagulian and, our, uh, and Victor Zielinski? There's the one ball straight to the side pocket. The two ball's not gonna tie up for him. I mean, he's gonna tie up for him, not, not dress up for him. All right. Let's see, let's see how this finally ended up. He doesn't have any part of that two ball. He's going to have to kick at it. I actually like this. Glass going to break the, the open. If he kicks it to, to the head rail and back, he can kick it past the into the He's nine, pushing four, four nine. He's pushing. I, I, I would have taken a look at that. Oh, he's got a kick and stick here, possibly. He possibly. Well. He's been in his chair for some time. He's looking at the same things we are. If he executes this kick and stick, he could come up right against a 6-3. And look at Josh watching the English he uses. Saying there's, and it's not gonna leak out. It's gonna hold tight. So Josh has a steep jump shot. Did he come prepared? Did he just call the corner pocket nearest him? He did. I'm trying to figure out what he's calling. Oh, it's two rail kicking the two ball. Not too far off. Quarter ball. And he's left a shot. Left a shot, left a pretty nice opportunity here because uh, well, the three ball's right there. Well, I'm gonna Maybe do a 3-8 combo. Down 4-0, Shane Wolford in that bright royal blue shirt is going to have some work to do here. And he's not going to be able to do it from there. Your I thoughts on the shot collection? The uh, shot selection? Shot selection, thank uh, you. I liked rolling into the Slow. three, not yeah. firing at the three. Yeah. Because he had the angle to go into it kind of with a, a little firm, but not, <laughs> not, not, not warp speed. Uh, a little firm to open it up. And, and with a slow hit, you have all of the three ball. But after he did what he just did, now yeah. you have none of it. Well, it, he didn't hit it exactly where he wanted to, and his cue ball got away from him, and now he's hooked. Yeah. So now he's got to play a good jump shot and stick it behind the nine <coughs> for an effective safety. Back. As 
you hear it, our referee, John Lehman, or our well-traveled referee, he goes all over the world. He has so many frequent flyer miles. I think they, have, they just give him a private jet at this point. I think he lives in the jet. He might have his own by now. Air Lehman. We could make a joke out of that. <laughs> <laughs> we can make a joke out of a lot of things. One thing we can't make a joke out of right now is Josh Filler's game. He's up 4 nothing and has a pretty clear open table to work with. And the bigger part of that story is his opponent hasn't said that he's here yet. Yeah. So Josh has, has had nothing to worry about yet. But Shane's still in that chair and still waiting his turn. I like the color of that shirt, though. I will tell you that. Well, blue, royal blue is one of my favorite colors. I'm a Cubbies fan. That's pretty close. I was going in another direction. I, I graduated from Pitt. Mm -hmm. Throw a little bit of yellow on there, and I'm good to go. Keep in mind, I used to work for a company that owned the Cubbies. Wrigley? Yes. What did you do for Wrigley? As a field representative, uh, account manager, and trainer. Okay. All yeah. in Arizona. Yeah, we got to get the small talk warmed up if this match is going to progress as it. I just hope we're going to do restaurant reviews. <laughs> we're, we got to. <laughs> I just hope I don't get nailed in the comments, you know, for, <laughs> for, for bringing that up. And Josh takes rack number five after this 10 ball drops. And he's been very effective at limiting Shane to anything whatsoever. And then Shane's done a pretty good job of Shane's done him. a pretty good job of limiting himself. Yeah, of helping a couple him. situations. There's only been a couple shots. Yeah. the second day of five for this 128 player tournament. We'll conclude on Saturday with two semifinal matches that begin. First one will begin at 10 a.m. local time. I believe the second one will begin at 1 a.m. local time and then the finals will be at 6 p.m. Ah. As we see Joshua's wife Pia. Young lady uh, prior to his match yesterday I said so I guess we're going to see a fast match here. She says I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I think it was uh, Molina Mike, who does a lot of the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, interviewed uh, Josh right afterwards. Now they're hand racking with that Predator arrow rack. And you can see the reflection of the Predator Arena lights. There's seven of them over this table because they light up the whole arena. And for those of you that use the light system to aim your shots, you're going to have trouble with these. <laughs> Which one do you pick as the middle? Yeah, truly a unique light. Yep. Big break again from the side. And part of the reason the players are breaking from the side is to leave that congestion. But look how wide open this is. Yeah. Leave some congestion so that their opponents can't run out if they don't make a ball on the break because they're not guaranteed a ball on the break. This is, as, as they might say in some parts of the country, this ain't no Templar rack. <laughs> this ain't no easy combination right. shot either for Shane Walford, but you can see he's looking at it and really down five to nothing he, he is probably of the mindset of I need to make something happen he does right now and I like this shot I like him going for this combo it's very makeable and there's position and it wins him the game nicely done and he has a nice angle to come across the table for that three ball or you know, if he cheats the pocket he um, should be okay coming he across. could also follow and lay on the rail for the three ball Upper, on the bottom part of your screen. I'll, see, I like following right here, just like that. Yep. And um, it's just 
go into an open area with perfect speed. Shane looking at back cutting this. This is a three ball that we saw missed earlier, I believe. And uh, oh. kind of just like that. Yeah. Exactly I think like he that. was very concerned about where the cue ball was going to land for the four ball. Uh -huh. To the point that a lot of times when you're focused on where the cue ball is going to be for the next shot, you make the mistake of not making the shot directly in front of you. Well, in my book, he just told Josh Filler, I'm no threat to you, buddy. Because that shot is, it's one of those shots that really is a telltale of the, of the player's nerves. Uh, It's one of those shots that's very easy to make, yet very, you know, not uh, also hard. It can be tough if you're nervous. So Shane had an opportunity there to stop yep. the bleeding. And instead, he's staring 6 nothing directly in the face. He's uh, with these five balls and this man at the table. He's doing more than staring. He might as well <laughs> just count it up. But it, you know, anything can happen. This is a pool game. That's a pool table. The, the balls are round, and um, we're human. He's human, or at least some people consider him human. <laughs> when it comes to playing pool, he might be from another planet. His top gear might be better than anybody else that's out there. Uh, Which, and, I, and that's not hyperbole. No. And we're gonna go for a one minute break, folks. Stay tuned. Back at it, clean cue ball, Josh Filler, Joshua Filler. Him and his wife and Torsten Homan represented uh, Germany. In the World Team Championships held in Klagenfurt, Austria. And we hope to see those come back to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Talk to Karim. Um the end of last year and he said that is the plan yes and that's that, big. Uh, that that the uh, the team championships will move to, to the island and the most recently acquired uh, world women's nine ball championship mm -hmm. that, the a, that apparently is going to be moving to New Zealand oh wow wow yeah and that's that was just held me. in Atlantic City right so next yeah. year yeah. wow and now, see, last year they had 26 countries represented, and the Philippines won. Um, uh, and I'm just wondering if they're going to have more, possibly more, in 26. Pumped into that eight ball. Again, he had a fairly decent opportunity to get onto the scoreboard here. Pumped into the eight, trying to secure position for the three. Let's see what he does he's here. Okay, he just wants to come to the right. Perfect. He's, he's, he's in good shape. Nice stroke on that ball. He moved the cue ball very effectively. And he's going to have the same type of a shot here, or he can choose to follow. I, I like the same kind of a shot he just shot. The question is, does that six pass by the nine? And that's a rather observant. If it doesn't, he's about, to, oh, I thought he was going to nibble it and put it in a place where it would. It looks like, from that angle, it looks like it'll just slither by. Yeah, it's still a hard shot because, spe well, especially when you've had the, the When you have any table time. Yeah, when yeah. you've had the misfortune that he's had, every shot's a tough shot. 
Yes, he is faced with that right now. He wants to be close to this so he can slide it by the nine. He's going around. He's going to go to the opposite side of it. What a beautiful shot. Nicely done. Except, oh, except he's pinned he up against paid the, the price. You don't want to play lumberjack at a shot like this. I will say if he can chop this in, he has a nice angle to get onto the set. Yeah, it's a natural, no matter where he ends up. And it's uh, not going to happen for him. It's just not happening for him. And that's exactly his walk back to the table. That's exactly what it said. Walk back to his chair, excuse me. And that little uh, upside down pyramid table. Did not want to rub that seven ball, I'm assuming. He's okay. Look at the show. Yeah. Watch, watch, watch when he gets down to this ball how nice this looks. And how nice it lays for the eight. And this is for a seven, zero, and on the hill lead. Just draw this right down the rail here. A little too much. He put some pace on this. He's okay. Yeah, he is. Barely, but he's okay. <laughs> In his mind, he's not, though. He doesn't like it. He's a perfectionist. You know, that, he doesn't like that. That has been the biggest evolution, I think, in him over the last five years, mm -hmm. is that when he missed position before, he would stand at the table and, and gesture and, and get frustrated. Mm -hmm. He is more able to accept the roles and, and the, the bad roles and the misfortune. Well, yeah. And I think part of that just comes with experience and maturity. Part of this puts him right on the hill. He got a little bit of that going in. But 7-0 nonetheless. That's one of the things I encourage a lot of players to do is when they're in the match, water just kind of cool those nerves, mm -hmm. uh, hydrate, get comfortable. Take your mind off just for a second or two while you enjoy that water. Players here are walking around in their new jam-up apparel. Some I've nice seen a lot nice of that around there. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of it, and it's. Uh, I think they're making shirts for uh, players like uh, Tyler Steyer, Allison Fisher. Uh, they have their own lines. Yeah, and they're, they're that was a venture that started. Uh, Predator got into the apparel yes. a couple of years ago. And now is it Damian Pompanik and Stephanie, our partners in that, and. Uh, Doing a great job with it. They have a booth here, along with other vendors, in the main ballroom here, where this arena is. Did he catch a rail? No, he did not. That was. Am I wrong? I guess. Well, that was a replay. Now jump shot over the one. I was shooting my mouth off about jam up apparel and uh, <laughs> <laughs> lost my concentration. Sorry, guys. As, as someone who suffers from attention, actually, I don't suffer from attention deficit disorder. I love every minute of it. Uh, you're never going to get any criticism from me <laughs> on that. If you're, if you're Shane right now, you oh, oh boy! I was just about to say, if you're Shane right now, the mindset has to be, let's get something on the board. 
Let's at least avoid this, this a few might, This might. Oh, no, look at this. Even this, he, he, he gives up a little bit of a window, an easy jump shot or a little bit of a um, spin shot, you know, semi-masse. He's got the jump cue out. Predator Air Rush with the full handle on it. He is a Predator-sponsored player. Call for his extension. I think that's been the first extension in the game. It's been the first extension needed in the game. It's flowed very well, folks. I mean... A good look at that. CSI Predator presents the world WPA. You know, each year that we do this event, they make little changes and improvements to make it better. And that background is one of the best ones, in yeah. my opinion. They hit the jackpot with that one. It's nice. The one for the Alpha Las Vegas Open that had the Vegas skyline going across the mm -hmm. bottom of it. Well, it's, it's really eye-catching. It's, it's LED, LED, so they right. can change it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and they, uh, they've done a lot. There's an old friend uh, sitting in the purple suit there, Ravi. Talk that about was, it. That was really nice of you, George, to let him borrow your suit. I'm <laughs> not a problem. He is one of the biggest pool fans you'll ever see. I've he known is. him for, for 20 years. Oh, and trouble. Nice hit, but he's left trouble. And so here's Shane with another opportunity. He hasn't had many, but he hasn't taken advantage of any. And it's funny, he ends up with this, and he's got a little funny angle that it's hard to get over there for the four. He's going to have to follow, looks like. And now he's going to lay real nice on it. Nice shot, Shane. Looking at the table, I mean, it just, to me, it comes down to execution. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of um, obstruction. Yeah, once this, once he uh, uh, shoots this four ball and ends up good on the five, and he did not end up nice on the five. He's going to have to go up and back, back down, down instead of just uh, coming straight across had he been straight in. But this is okay. This is very, a uh, word I like to use is doable. Shane Shomir here too. And he's a little over the nine. He's hampered, his queuing will be hampered by the nine ball. And that was the difference between getting straight on the five and having to run the cue ball back towards the six. So I would call that a positional error. Oh. And resulting in elevation mm -hmm. and the miss. Looks like the ball is froze. He did get a little bit fortunate with where that six ball landed. Yeah, the, the problem here is he's going to have to hit it, make sure he catches a rail with a cue ball, and, and push that ball past the nine nice and soft, like this, and up against the nine. Very well executed shot. Shane's walking back to his chair, grabbing his jump cue. It's awfully close. I think I'd rather go rail first. Yeah. Especially considering we've already seen a foul trying to jump. And that 10 ball that he hit earlier yeah. was a lot closer, excuse me, a lot further away. Yeah. Well, the other thing about going rail first is he had a good chance of making it. And he's going to be down by the seven ball. He can choose to play safe or be aggressive. Of course, everything looks easy from the chair here. But he's at the table. He calls the shots. Oh, overcut the ball a little Rare bit. Rare miss by Joshua. Mm -hmm.
little grimace as he walks back to the table, kind of half laughing, half half uh, chuckling at himself. I think I'd be saying, well, not everything can go right for me. <laughs> this, has been, <laughs> this has been a, a cakewalk so far. And again, the question remains. Oh, look at this. Way this is trouble, way, way too, too hard. hard. I was just about to say the question comes down to can he execute? Well, this the cut balls shot were there, the shots were makeable. It comes down to can you do it? This cut shot is there. I don't think he catches a piece of the eight, but I don't think he can come around out of the upper corner either. So this is a tough shot. He might play safe here. No, he cut it. And you see, I, I didn't think yeah. he could wrap out of that corner. It was a tough shot. And this should, this should put the icing on the cake and serve it up to Josh. You know, I used the phrase at the beginning of this match, youthful exuberance. Do you think Shane in four or five years, if he faces this shot again, plays a safe instead of trying to be aggressive and cut the ball wow. in? That, that shot is, it's a makeable shot. Right. And had he made the ball, he would not scratch. He overcut the ball and ended up going right in the drink. Mm -hmm. So that gives you an idea. He had to contend with the side pocket. He did. But, uh, you know, still. And this is for the match. And to move on into round two of the winners and sending Shane over to the one loss side. If you're going to lose a match, lose it here because in the final 32, it does you no good. You're gone. Good experience for Shane. I'm sure he'll learn from this, though. Uh, He's going to want to watch this video and learn quite a bit. Keith Paradise, thank you very much. This is George DHA in the booth. Thanks, folks. See you down the road. Let's do it again real soon, George. Thanks, you everybody. Bet. Good night.